You're listening to the Urban Farm Podcast, your partner in the grow your own food revolution. Whether you've just been introduced to urban farming or you're a lifelong advocate, we're sure you'll leave feeling more informed, equipped, and empowered to dig deeper into the soil of your local food economy. With you every step of the way, here's your host, Greg Peterson. Today on the Urban Farm Podcast, we have Casey Hay to talk about gardening as a tool for special education and student partnerships. One of Casey's personal missions is to educate our up-and-coming generations with knowledge that is attainable for all learning styles. She currently works in a self-contained special education classroom at Curry Elementary in the Tempe School District in the Phoenix metropolitan area. She has introduced the Kindness Matters Garden Project, which she originally created in 2013 to the School of Special Ed program. This program builds self-confidence and pride in the students by walking them through all of the steps of planting and maintaining a garden from seed, also providing the opportunity to connect general education and special education students together. Welcome to the show, Casey. Thank you, Greg. Nice to be here. So I shared a bit about you. Can you fill in the blanks for us and share how you got on this path to where you, what you're doing now? Oh, sure. Um, wow. Well, it's been a long path. When I first came out of really high school, I kind of worked as a habilitation provider. And that's when I first got introduced into the world of special education. Now, that's after school kind of programs or uh-huh. working in the homes and right. whatnot. You know, as time went on and then I didn't go to college or to a university until my late 20s. Um, I, I guess I just wasn't ready for that yet. Mm-hmm. And I went to University of Arizona and I studied a few different things. And I studied uh, speech and hearing sciences, uh, environmental studies, and started going down the path of becoming a, a special education teacher. Mm-hmm. And it turned out that I was missing something. Uh-huh. So my path kind of took a different direction. And I paused for a little bit. And I realized a big part of my world or something that drives me you know, is, well, is gardening on a small scale to a large scale, meaning like a community garden Mm -hmm. um, and just getting involved in the community itself. And, Uh you know, University of Arizona is in Tucson, Arizona, and it's just an amazing community for gardeners and, you know, connecting with each other and Mm -hmm. so much on so many levels. And when I went back to school, I created the Kindness Matters Garden. And what it was... I was working with a Flowing Wells High School or junior high, mm-hmm. and I worked with an amazing woman named Shauna McLamory. And their special education classroom had grown sunflowers, you know, outside their room. And someone had uh, just, well, just, just destroyed the garden completely. Uh-huh. And it, you know, it could have been, you know, high school or you know, junior high students just trying to pick flowers, but it just crushed these students. Mm-hmm. And I heard this story, and I was like, well. You know, one of my one of my hobbies is painting, and uh-huh. I really wanted to kind of come up with something to I don't know, just ease that that pain and set up something that that, that wouldn't happen again. And so we came up with an idea as a mural of the sunflower, so that nobody could ever steal this again. Right. And um, it started growing and growing from there, and and I got into the school system and created a buddy system with the art class mm-hmm. and the special ed class and they put them together and we got wow. everything donated right and they built a mural of all these sunflowers together and it still stands there today and that's kind of what started you know this whole kindness matters project and now i am you know i've relocated and i'm in phoenix arizona mm-hmm and I took it off, you know, the sunflower, the kindness matters off the wall, you would say, and into the actual garden and started teaching these students how to grow a garden from seed, you know, depending on the season. And it's just flourished. It's just, it's off the map what's happened. It's amazing. So you have a garden. Yes. And can you explain how your garden time normally goes with the students? Like, what does that whole process look like? Oh, sure. So, um... I am on my second year working with Curry, and last year we started our we started the project probably about January or February. You know, mm-hmm. really kind of getting the garden going. So it's Perfect a bit time. different, yep. right? Than than this fall version. But so it also depends on what you're actually going to grow itself. But the point being, you know, we really they get to pick the seeds themselves. We get to learn about it in the classroom. Mm-hmm. You know, 
you know, work all those pieces together, bringing in the math, you know, math portion to reading and writing about it, to the steps, to bringing in the different maps they're working on at the time and, you know, sequencing. I mean, there's just so many educational things you can use with it. Um, and then the actual physical piece, you know, these kiddos get to, you know, soak the seeds and then the, you know, the next step would be to take these seeds and they put them in, um, as you say, the like paper towel, almost like Ziploc bag, like watch the right? root, yeah. you know, and then they get to pick which ones that they're going to use and they're, it's going to be in their garden, you know, big pride, lots of pride mm -hmm. being built there. And, you know, from there, some are greenhouse, some are go right into the garden, depending on what it is. And, and then they take the responsibility of watering the garden, you know, and as it goes on, you know, as these grow and they get bigger and bigger, you know, connections are happening between the gen ed students and the special ed students. All I right. mean, they start getting recognized. They start knowing their names. They start, oh, that's a really beautiful garden that you're building. I mean, right. they it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So special education students, you're working with a, basically making connections between special education students and general education students. What's the distinction there? What's the difference? Oh, sure. So it doesn't always, in our situ particular situation, we have the PALS program and we're going pretty wide range. So it could be behavioral, it could be a learning disability. We're definitely the young, the, the young ones. So right. not all diagnosis would fully be there, but there's definitely prevalent you know, different pieces that are pointing in different directions, mm -hmm. you know, things are happening. I, you know, I definitely have witnessed a lot of autism. Yeah, it's just kind of all over the board. So these, yeah. these special education students, they're generally, they, they might be marginalized, one would say? Uh, yeah, you could say that, yes. And by other students and by our system. And I suspect that by putting these two groups of students together and having them work together, you're seeing magic happen, yes? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Like, like that, what? Well, it comes to, um, you know, there's always a just kind of a natural, I don't know, there's, there, there's even as children, even though children can be so beautiful and so adaptable, they're from kindergarten to fifth grade is a big difference, mm -hmm. you know, and there is this actual moment of happening that, oh, something's different, and I don't know about something that's different, right. you know, and that wall kind of goes up. So it, it is a vast difference from the K to the fifth grade, you know, perception of, you know, this PALS program mm -hmm. and uh, within the, gen, uh, you know, gen ed population. But, you know, it's the, this kind of project sets up gen ed classrooms, you know, teachers are getting involved, getting their kids involved, you know, whether it could be art projects that are also involved in it or going together to water the garden or just working together on many different levels. It just breaks down that whole barrier of they're different. Right. You know, it's that, you know, they, they're just like you, they're a kid, they want to play, <laughs> yeah, they want to exactly. have fun, you yeah. know, they want to enjoy mm -hmm. and it, it creates this environment of also like protection you know and i think i made a oh, comment yeah. in there right you know of you know, especially the yeah one of my favorites is on the playground you know after lunch and seeing these two different populations become one come so cohesive you know helping each other helping each other out maybe they stumbled and fall, fell or just playing tag you know and mm -hmm. giggling and finding their way you know and it, because of that that project it just kind of gives them that reason to be like oh yeah that's my buddy like it's all it's all good <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. That, that, you know, and, and for me, it's, it's coming together around food. You know, when we come <laughs> as, as communities, no matter what community is, when we come around food, there's peace. Yes. What yeah. a great way to put that. Yeah. No, well, thank you. I, you know, it's just, that's what I see. So, so what kind of difference are you seeing in the students? Oh, wow. Well, you got, got any specific stories? Oh, wow. Let's see here. Well, yeah, absolutely. Like, for example, you know, there's one particular student who um, today, he's one of the older students. Mm -hmm. And what we kind of been doing where I will, like, I'll go around at the end of the day, you know, it's every other day, maybe. And I'll ask because there's three sped classes at mm -hmm. the school, you know, and I'll kind of walk in and give a kind of a gesture to the teacher, you know, or, or the general, whoever's kind of there running the right. running the moment in time. Uh -huh. And um you know, it's like, you know, I kind of put my hands up. I put a two up, like a peace sign. And it means, are there two students that you think that have done really well that day oh, that kind of deserve nice. to, you know, to, to go do this? And they kind of all partner up. And and so I get try to get two from each. But also, it can go a different direction. Sometimes with, you know, that with sped population, it can also just be a behavioral um, to a diversion. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the end of the day. They're tired. Right. You never know what's going on. You don't know what's going on at home. They may just be spent. They're 
not, you know, acting very well in the classroom. You know, they're, they just need to get out of there. And it's, and that's totally fine too, because, you know, I keep a spot in the garden as well, like open. I don't plant anything in it. And it's very, it's for sensory. It's being able to put your hands in that oh, dirt yeah. uh-huh. and just release all that energy, you know, and, and that's fine as well, you know, and just changing the dynamic, changing the scenario that they're in, all of a sudden they just snap right out of it and they're good to go. You know, um, as well, the connection between the different ages mm-hmm. is also on the plate now because a, a lot many students have older or younger siblings. All right. Sometimes those siblings could all be sped related. Sometimes they're not at all. But the point being that they know that feeling of, of protection or showing the younger yeah. ones what to do and what's right, what's wrong. I mean, it really provides all of this at the same time. And every time we, we go out to the garden, it's different every time. But every time they come back, hmm. it's always beneficial. Nice. It, it is awesome. Nice. So Kindness Matters is the name of your garden project. Yes. Well, what, tell me about that. What's that? Why, why did you come up with that? Well, that came back to, you know, the moment where I kind of switched gears in, in my life. You know, I had started, I was at U of A and, mm-hmm. and I, you know, I was going down the, the typical road of, of the special ed, or becoming, the, you know, special education teacher. And I was, <laughs> well, this was probably one of my biggest learning lessons. Um, Bring it. I was trying to burn, I was burning the candle at both ends. Mm -hmm. You know, I was attempting to to student teach, but I was also maintaining a a full-time job that had nothing to do with special education, you know, and nothing gets a job, but you know, it was a serving job and you know, something you kind of do while you're going to school Uh and, you know, and that's just fine. But when it was that time period, it did not at least work for me, you know, Mm -hmm. it just was not cohesive. And So I kind of puttered and I stopped for a little bit. And then when I went, you know, went back and was finishing and I started working with Shauna McLamory, you know, Flowing Wells, um, I was really inspired at the time by Be Kind. Mm. Um, Mm -hmm. And if you're familiar, and it's just this amazing program that's in Tucson, you know, that... Oh, it just blows my mind even just thinking about it, you know, but I'll give a, you know, a little bit here. When Gabby Giffords was, was shot... right. And Kindness Matters was the only group allowed past the tape besides the cops themselves. And because what they were doing was all the, you know, the different wind chimes and whatnot, you know, they put around the city for Mm -hmm. you to find, to really remember to be kind. You know, they had just put them all over that area for that reason because it needed healing. Mm -hmm. And I was so inspired by that. And it really always stick with me. And, And that's, you know, that was another piece. And then once I started putting together the whole buddy system and working together, you know, with the gen ed and the special ed and not making a division, putting those, making that cohesion, kindness matters really fit. And, um, during that, that for original project, you know, I had given the, you know, all the students, uh, a assignment that was that you needed to draw your three day, class days, you know, to draw, uh, any images or any, you know, the final didn't, could be anything you wanted. But the right. catch was it had to have nine sunflowers representing the nine children mm-hmm. that were in the sped classroom. Mm-hmm. And it had to have the words kindness matters. And I still to say, you know, have all all of the drawings. and They're all beautiful. And I just love looking at them. Mm, yeah. And it was pretty. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. And so it's just kept going, you know, and it's just I think it's just perfect. Fantastic. So you started you started answering my next question, and that's a time you failed and how you ever overcame it, and you were burning the candle at both ends. Oh, yeah. What was the upshot of that? What did you learn? What I learned for, for myself, you know, and I think that for, I would assume for many of your listeners would probably fall under the same, you know, category, not all, but many, mm-hmm. you know, is when you have a goal in your life, you have to align your life with it, mm. you know, and you've got to just, you got to go all in, you know, and... Yeah. And it's not always safe and it's, it doesn't always feel, you know, it, it can be scary and this and that. And you got to change and you got to shed things that you maybe you depended on in the past, maybe you feel comfortable, you know, but you got to align everything in your life to really be that goal yeah. that you want, you know, that you want to achieve. Yeah. And that's just huge. And, you know, at the time I was, at, you know, I was mm-hmm. still stuck with what had, had kind of gotten me there at that point. Mm-hmm. But now I've made quite the shift, yeah. you know, so that was that. Yeah. And that's a powerful, powerful statement that you just shared. It's, you know, I I do that. And the people that I see that are most successful, that's what they're doing. 
And it's like, this is who I am in life and this is what I'm doing. Yes. Yeah. You're one. It's kind of, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. it, and it sounds simple. You know, it's, it's not always easy. That there needs to be a distinction made sometimes there, but yeah. it, it, it's, that's the, you know, that's the answer. At least it was for me. You Perfect. Know? What do you consider your biggest success? Oh, where I stand today. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, and you know, that how I was able to get to where I am is believing and everything I've done to get me to this point, mm, nice. you know, and yeah. you know, you just, you know, at one point in time, it was feeling like a failure, you know, or feeling like mm -hmm. you know, maybe you should have done something or different and oh, absolutely. But all of those steps get you to where you are, you know, and, right. and that was that, you know, back to that time too. And, and when I was going to U of A, you know, it was, you know, I had a lot of things there that were wonderful, but it just wasn't, it wasn't going together, mm -hmm. you know, and now, I can see all those pieces and they just fit together like a puzzle. It's just amazing. Nice. nice. So what drives you? What's your big why in all of this? Oh, wow. Biggest one is I love fighting for the underdog. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, it just in every, every aspect, right. you know, it always seems to come back to that. Um, and I just love the beauty in the special education fields. They, every student I've ever met, ever met and I've met many mm -hmm. have ins you know have inspired me and taught you know have, have educated me as well as myself educating them you know it's always mutual yeah. you know and just to beauty and honesty and the beauty to just be real and admit maybe if you need to change something to really to admit that you're doing well you know those aren't always easy things yeah. and to just believe you know and I with that and with that thought process it just brings all those good things, those people, that inspiration. Oh, oh, this local place opened up and it's on the same you know, realm. It's amazing when you get a certain thought process going on in your mind. All of a sudden, everything around you <laughs> is the same. It is yeah. completely cohesive with it. It's yeah. amazing. Perfect. <laughs> so I'm all about education and I have to know, is there one book that's been highly influential in the process of getting you here? Uh, one? I don't know if one, but <laughs> I know it's a hard question. It is a hard question, but I would have to say on a personal level, mm -hmm. the two that come to mind would be Still Life with Woodpecker by Tom Robbins mm -hmm. and Siddhartha by Herman Hesse. Oh, wow. I think those, those two books probably were the most helpful in my world mm -hmm. to kind of recollect or figure out where I was going or where I was coming from and self-discovery and, and learning how to, you know, to be real, you know, a big thing to, yeah. you know, how to succeed is you have to have that knowledge, you know, and sometimes it's completely inside you, you know, and you got to find it. And you got to find it. Yeah. Fantastic. So one final piece of advice you have for our listeners. I would say up to this point in my life, the key to success in anything, anything that you want to do mm -hmm. would have to be three things, knowledge, mm -hmm. equ equipment, and motivation. And those three things together, you can succeed at anything. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us today on the show and sharing your experience, Casey. It's been a blast. Uh, oh. What's what's the best way for our listeners to get a hold of you? Well, absolutely. Um, I'd say the best way would be by email. Okay. Uh, and it, it's pretty pretty simple it is hey Casey J uh, it's my that's my name uh -huh. at gmail.com that's fun hey Casey J I like that <laughs> perfect well that's it for today thanks for joining us on the urban farm podcast thank you so much this was wonderful I really appreciate it absolutely interested in learning more and taking control of your food future text urban farm to 33444 to sign up for our weekly urban farming newsletter jam-packed with urban farming tips stories from people just like you learning to urban farm and free classes the urban farm lifestyle newsletter will equip you to join the urban farming revolution text urban farm to 33444 we hope you enjoyed today's episode of the urban farm podcast Remember to listen three days a week for tips, advice, and resources to help you on your journey with urban farming. You can find us on the web at urbanfarm.org or send us an email to podcast at urbanfarm.org. 
In the words of Vincent van Gogh, great things are done by a series of small things brought together. Be encouraged that with each lesson learned and skill developed, you are one step closer in the direction of your dreams.